A Caribbean nation descends deeper into chaos. The State Department pledges increased support to resolve the crisis. It's a highly regarded tourist destination, known for its diverse attractions and vibrant culture. It's being called apocalyptic. Some streets in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince, look like a war zone. The only safe way in or out is by helicopter. So as you can see, there's lots of activity going on on Bavaro Beach, even on the weekdays. Uh, this is what we're cruising right now. I'm just showing you some of the hotel resorts as you walk around this beach. Haiti and the Dominican Republic share the Caribbean island of Hispaniola. Yet their history and socioeconomic outcomes are so different. Today, the Dominican Republic has one of the fastest growing economies in Latin America, while Haiti remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Haiti has a political history that is marked by instability. The country has had frequent changes in government, coups, and periods of dictatorship. The long rule of the Duvalier family left a legacy of corruption and repression. We had a dictatorship that the U.S. And, um, supported for 36 years from, you know, uh, until 1986, where you have this brutal dictatorship and the U.S. supported this man because he was anti-communist. Um, that was the, the Duvalier regime, the, the, the father and the son. Um, and then we have, you know, the finally after all these years, he was overthrown not really overthrown because the France, France sent a plane for him and his family um, and they, they went to live in exile, which is the other thing is Duvalier's wife is still, Baby Duck's wife is still in France living off of the riches of Haiti. She's still on Twitter tweeting about Haiti, which I find egregious. Haiti's poor infrastructure has been a major obstacle to its development. The lack of clean water and sanitation contributes to poor health outcomes. The river in Cap Haitian Haiti, and it is full of trash. It's supposed to go directly to the sea. As you can see, the trash with all of this garbage in it. It stops right here. Yeah, it's right here. Haiti has limited public funds available for infrastructure projects. The country has also suffered from extensive deforestation, largely due to the demand for charcoal as a primary energy source. This deforestation has led to severe soil erosion, loss of arable land, and increased vulnerability to natural disasters such as hurricanes and floods. The reserves of wood have diminished severely to the point where there is very little forest left in Haiti. I think there is about 2% coverage in Haiti, and it's sadly very visible when you're flying over the island. In contrast, the Dominican Republic has implemented policies to protect its natural resources and promote sustainable development. As a result, the country has been able to maintain a more stable agricultural sector and protect its biodiversity. DR is home to the highest point of the Caribbean, the Pico Duarte, with 3,098 meters high. The country is one of the major exporters of things you love, like cacao, coffee, and tabac. We are home to the only non-undersea national park in the Caribbean. The DR is the largest producer of organic bananas in the whole world. The Dominican Republic has experienced better political stability in recent decades. The end of Rafael Trujillo's dictatorship in 1961 marked the beginning of a gradual transition to democracy. Subsequent governments have implemented economic reforms and policies that have fostered growth and stability. The country's political system, while not without challenges, has been more conductive to long-term development. The Dominican Republic has made significant investments in education, leading to higher literacy rates and better educational outcomes. The country has also improved healthcare infrastructure and services, resulting in better health indicators such as life expectancy. Participation in regional trade agreements, such as the Central America Dominican Republic Free Trade Agreement, has boosted exports and attracted foreign investment. The country's strategic location and stable economic policies have made it an attractive partner for international businesses. Haiti, on the other hand, has never been able to attract these kinds of business. Santo Domingo is the capital of Dominican Republic, which is on the island of Hispanola. And Dominican Republic shares Hispanola with Haiti. I've just been to Haiti. Welcome to Cape Haitian in Haiti. And you couldn't find two countries that share an island, largely share a colonial history and ethnic heritage, more different than these two. Haiti has been independent much longer, over a century longer, than many of the West African countries, as has Dominican Republic. How come Haiti is dysfunctional and Dominican Republic is not? 
Dominican Republic now is the largest economy in the Caribbean and excluding some of the rich tax havens that are still colonies of the Europeans, the richest country by head of population. Whereas Haiti feels like a dysfunctional West African country. Now, if you can't blame slavery and colonialism, you have to blame just one thing left, and that is the Haitians themselves. Does it break down into tribes? No, because the former slaves, the descendants of slaves, aren't in tribal groups like in West Africa. There's a rich poor divide, there's a corrupt non-corrupt divide. But that's not to say that the foreigners haven't had some negative impact in Haiti. Let's look at the UN, just two examples. After the 2010 earthquake, when a friend of mine tragically died in the UN building, the UN sent peacekeepers, but they sent peacekeepers from Nepal which was a cholera endemic country, and Haiti had been cholera free. They put the Nepalese soldiers upstream from a drinking source and put untreated sewage into the water. And of course, that's what spreads cholera. So from being cholera free, it is now cholera endemic in Haiti, and there's been at least 14,000 cholera related deaths. And the UN still claims sovereign immunity from prosecution for over 14,000 deaths. Currently, the increase in gang violence has led to the displacement of thousands of Haitians fleeing neighborhoods that have been raided by gangs. Jimmy Chavizier, aka Barbecue, is a gang leader and former police officer who is now one of the most powerful men in the country after the Prime Minister resigned. My government will leave immediately after the inauguration of the council. We will be a caretaker government until they name a Prime Minister and a new cabinet. Haiti needs peace. Haiti needs stability. Many wonder what comes next in a country that has seen decades of spiraling crises fueled by failed state institutions. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications.